One of the big changes in the last 10 years on soybean farms across the country is the use of soybean fungicides. So even on our farm, for example, we farm in eastern South Dakota, we only get 20 to 24 inches of total annual precipitation. I mean, that includes the snow. So we're not in what would be considered a wet area of the country, not in an area where we normally have major disease problems. But you know what? We've had good yield response spraying soybeans at about the R2 to R3, so in other words, full flower to first pot stage in beans we go out there and we've made applications of either a half rate or a full rate of fungicide and it's worked well it has but you think about it Brian over the years we've got to mix things up just a little bit or we're gonna run into some issues like in soybeans in our part of the world guys will use some dough mark well, okay that's a triazole I can prevent white mold or I'm gonna use something like headline that's a strobal urine and that's it that's pretty much the rotation here just two things well one of them already has disease resistance issues in other parts of the world wow I'm nervous about that happening here I'd like to have a third mode of action Brian okay so the third mode of action you're looking for Darren is the carboxamide family there has been Endura that's been out for a few years Luna is now out and the brand new one that just got released is Zemium. now you can't buy Zemium all by itself it's from BASF what you can buy though is premixes with headline there's going to be Marivon and Preaxor and the Preaxor is what they're going to recommend for use in soybeans and that's a mixture of again this zemium and headline. Well, okay, so there's a couple of different things here. When you're thinking about getting multiple modes of action out, this is a concept that really most farmers embrace. All right, I'm gonna use a combination product. In the past, it's been something like a Headline Amp or a Quilt XL or a Stratego Yield, something like that, where you get a triazel and you also get a strobal urine. Well, now we can get a carboxamide and we can also get a strobal urine with it. So we can still yep. get that plant health benefit that we're looking for out of the strobe, but we can now get a carboxamide out there. So it's something different than a triazel, so we keep that mixing up the modes of action out in our field. Okay, with this Preaxor, the use rate that we're going to recommend in a lot of cases in soybeans is gonna be four ounces, and that's gonna give you about 5.3 ounces of headline and some of this zemium. Now to talk specifically about the zemium and what you really get out of that, one of the main things is it does have a little bit of curative activity, but don't think it's tremendous. Same thing like we say with triazoles, you still wanna be preventative. Spray before you see the disease problem, but just so you know, the zemium does have a little bit of curative activity. Well, it is going to get down into that leaf just a little bit. And you know, if you've got a, a fungal growth wait, starting... Wait, wait, when you say down into the leaf, it doesn't move down at all in the plant. It only moves in the xylem just like all the other fungicides. Okay, it's going to so. penetrate into yes. the leaf a little bit. Maybe that's a better way to say it. And if you've got a fungal growth starting on top of the leaf surface, it's going to send some roots basically down into the, into the leaf itself or into those cells. And if you've got a fungicide that will actually penetrate into that leaf a little bit, it can fight some of that off and kill it off. So one of the nice things with Zemium is they say it's going to have longer residual and the reason why is it seems to get held up in the waxy leaf cuticle of that, that leaf. When it gets held up in the wax, it slowly then releases down into the leaf. And again, it's just gonna give you a little bit longer residual than what a headline would. The other nice thing with the Zemium is it does have fairly good movement in the leaf. So it won't move downward in the leaf, but it will move upward in the leaf, something similar to like what Quadris does. So it will move a little bit better inside the leaf. Okay, one last point that I wanted to make when we come back to this whole disease resistance thing is the Zemium acts at a different site, a different complex in the disease chain. So when we're talking about stopping diseases, basically the zemium is gonna hit one area of the disease, the headline or strobal urine is going to hit another area of the disease. So you've got two different points and that's the reason why we can hopefully prevent more disease resistance from occurring in the United States. Well, Brad, disease resistance is important, but weed resistance is a real thing right now out in fields. We'll show you how to stop this weed that is becoming resistant in our Weed of the Week segment.